Shalom. This is Bishop Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. I want to start off by saying thank you to all of our Booster Club members for your many donations and much more your prayers. We visited faraway countries and strange lands. We've even spoken to dignitaries and were detained for spreading the glorious gospel in Cuba. The truth is that the descendants of the 12 tribes of Israel were scattered throughout the world. Help us on our journey as we continue to raise up the nation of Israel. 12 tribes worldwide. Join or donate today. Shalom. Genesis chapter 1 and verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image. The us is God, Christ, and the angels. Right? He said, let us make man in our image. Read. After our likeness. After our likeness, meaning man looks like God and the angels and Christ. Read. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, let the men derive from fish. Read that again. And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So if you believe the Bible, because the Bible is the only thing I can think of brought out. The Bible is the only thing that tells us who we are today. Because the white man tells us we're Nigerian, African American, Yoruba, right? Ebo. Those are all names that came from the white woman. The white man. You understand? So the Bible is the only book that tells us in the last days who God's people are and why we're in the condition we're in today. So if we believe in the slave ships, if we believe that God put us in slavery under our oppressors, that they come and colonize our land, if we believe all that, because we believe that, right? Why don't we believe this? You understand? Why would we let someone come in from the outside and disrupt what you all have been learning today? Because what you all have been learning today is 100% truth. Right? Read it again, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea. So man was made to have dominion over the fish of the sea. Let me ask you a question. Uh, what kind of fish y'all got out What kind of fish they got out here? Uh, in America we got whiting, bass, brim. What they got here? Coca fish. Y'all got coca fish. All that stuff out here, right? Has a coca fish ever jumped out of the ocean and smacked you? <laughs> Lord, the Lord gave us the dominion over that. He gave man dominion over this planet Earth. That's why today, who rule the Earth? Men. Right? Read. And over the fowl of the air. And the birds. Read. And over the cattle. And over all the Earth. And over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the Earth. So man has always, from the beginning of time, had dominion. Why? Because we were made in God's image. We were made in God's image. Now, give me the book of Numbers. Back book 40, Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Because today you learn to the Israelites, right? You brothers, brothers learn you Israelites. I talk to you all the time. You got the tithe and thing? You, you build the tithe? I love it. I love it. <laughs> Ezekiel 18, verse 30. Ezekiel chapter 18, and verse 30. Now watch this, brothers. Therefore, will I judge you, O house of Israel? So, can somebody hold the sign? So the Bible says, therefore I will judge you on the house of Israel. So when you look at the young side on our neck, when you look at us being colonized, some of us take it to the Americas, that's the shores of the Americas, enslaved, forced to pick cotton. Like where I'm from in Mississippi, that was the cotton capital of the world. That's where the most cotton was picked in Mississippi. Y'all heard of Mississippi in America before? That's where I'm from. That's where the most cotton was picked, right? Burn alive. Same thing happened here in Nigeria. The Bible said, what? Read that again. Therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. The, the Lord has not judged the white man like this. You understand? The, the Lord has not judged the Chinese, the Arabs. He judged the Israelites like this. So the Lord says, therefore, I will judge you, O house of Israel. Read. Everyone according to his ways. You can bring it back right here. Everyone according to his ways, meaning there's different judgment for different sins, right? If you're a fornicator, get that real quick. Give me uh, Hebrews 13 and 4. Right? There's different judgment for different sins. For instance, if somebody were to eat a lot of pork, right? Like pork, swine, pig, they might get something called high blood pressure. Certain diseases such as the gout, right? 
different things like this. For fornication, for going from woman to woman to woman to woman, God has a judgment for that. So that's why he's talking about judge you according to your ways. Whatever sin you involved in, you'll be judged according to that sin. Right? With different plagues. Read it. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable in all. Bible says marriage is honorable in all. Read. And the bed undefiled. Meaning as long as it doesn't violate the laws of Leviticus the 18th chapter. What you and your wife do behind closed doors is between you and your wife. Read. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. So God says he's going to judge whoremongers and adulterers. My brother right here, you've been listening. How do you think God can judge a man that has immoral sex with multiple women? Are you having immoral sex with multiple women? Not really, but... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Rewind that. Not really. What is, okay, there's no in-between. You're either you having sex with multiple women or you're not. Are you? No. So you got a wife? I'm not. So you got a girlfriend? Do you sleep with other women? No. Okay, you thought I'm going to blow up your spot. She must be around here looking. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. <laughs> Read it again. He think I'm going to blow his spot up. Go ahead. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 4. Marriage is honorable at all. So when you read the Bible, you never read boyfriend or girlfriend. You read about marriage. The Bible says out of the many things that God honors, the number one thing is marriage. He honors that thing. Marriage is honorable in the eye. Read it. And the bed under five. So, for instance, if you want to break up with your girlfriend, right? And then you get with another woman in five years, that's still fornication because you're not married. You understand? So the bed is only undefiled with you and your wife. If you're laying with a woman without marrying her, that's a defiled bed because you're sleeping with one of the daughters of Israel. I hope it's a woman of Israel, not one of these other nations. You don't like white women, do you? Okay, good. Great. But whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Now, you may have been with that woman for 10 years, but the fact that you're not married, that still makes you a whoremonger because you're susceptible to get with another woman in the process of time. Or she's susceptible to get with another man in the process of time. Now, Exodus 22, 16. Listen, you got it? Exodus 22, you already are okay. So let me say what God's law is. God has a law. Exodus 22, verse uh, 16. God has a law pertaining to men. I was going to deal with our sisters. Exodus chapter 22 and verse 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, he shall surely endow her to be his wife. So the Bible says if a man entice a maid, that means if a man talks to a woman, he likes, I don't know y'all, stop, please stop doing it. Please stop doing that. Y'all do that. That's, that's nasty. Stop doing it. But I said, when y'all do that, y'all talk to these women around here, y'all try to get a don't you? He's mild because he know he be doing it. Y'all do that to try to get women to come, so that's enticing her. That you're trying to have a conversation with her, trying to get to know her, right? So the Bible says, when you do that, when you go out on the limbs to try to get to know that woman, and then you do it, and entice a maid that is not betrothed and lie with her, and you have sex with her, but you didn't admit you having sex with your little friend, really? He shall surely endow her to be his wife. Bible says, you shall surely endow her to do what? To be your wife. Now, she may be a demon. I don't know. She may not believe the Bible. Guess what you got to do? First Corinthians 7, verse 1. Guess what you got to do? There's a lot of brothers within our church that they're not married. But they don't have girlfriends. They have vowed a vow as abstinence. They have vowed a vow of abstinence until they find their wife. Some brothers have not been married for five years. And you may be thinking in your mind, that's a hard thing. Right? That's a hard thing to not touch a woman for five years. To not have you say it's not hard. Okay, let's see you not do it. Because you're fornicating right now. Somebody ain't hard. He gets his butt right now. You ready? First Corinthians 7 1. First Corinthians chapter 7 and verse 1. Now concerning the things whereof we wrote unto me. If it is good for a man not to touch a woman. He said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. That's not a homosexual phrase. He's saying that if you don't be about God's business and you don't plan to marry that woman, it's good that you don't have sex with that woman unless you plan to marry her. Once you get married, then you're free to do what you want to do, like we read earlier. Being under fire, as long as you're not breaking the laws of Leviticus, the 18th chapter. Right? So that's why he said it's good for a man not to touch a woman. Really? Verse 2, nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife. He said, but if you can't control yourself, you just have to have sex. He said, let to avoid fornication, to be avoid being called a fornicator, let every man have his wife. Own wife. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed 
But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.